Hi, Penny Carlson from Topics in Digital Photography. In our last video, we took three photographs that I had taken of a sunset in southern Florida. One of the photos was overexposed, one of the photos was underexposed, and one of the exposures was the correct exposure. And we used Photomatix to combine that into one photo, which gave us more tonal range and more details in both our highlights in the sky and our shadows in the landscape portion of the picture. Now we're going to take a picture that we produced using Photomatix. I'm going to show you my basic workflow for these types of photos using first Adobe Lightroom and then Adobe Photoshop CS6. Let's open Adobe Lightroom. Normally, I would launch my photos right from Lightroom into Photomatix, but since some of you may not be using Lightroom, I brought them into Photomatix directly from my hard drive. So now I've got to bring the photograph that I processed using Photomatix into Lightroom. So I'm going to go up to File, Import Photos and Videos. I'm going to find that photo. I'm going to bring all the photos in. So I select them, click Import. I'm going to double click on my Photomatix photo and go to our develop mode. This photo looks pretty nice coming out of Photomatix and really doesn't need all that much work. I'm going to hide my panel over here on the left, show my panel on the right because that's where I'll be working. Usually when I start processing a photo that I haven't worked with in HDR, I'll hit the Auto button on the Exposure mode to see where that gets me. But with Photomatix, I normally have a pretty good exposure from the get-go, and generally it'll just fool with my shadows and highlights. So I might want to bring my highlights down a little bit more, my shadows up a little bit more. I'm not really liking that. Let's go back to where we were. Check my whites and blacks by holding the Alt key down. And they're actually pretty good. If anything, maybe I want to reduce them a touch. Blacks I want to bring back a little bit more. That looks good. One of the main things I really want to do with this photo is to use a graduated filter on it to darken the sky a little bit. If you remember when we looked at our underexposed sunset picture, we got a more dramatic sky. Well, you can use this graduated filter right here to just darken selected areas in the photograph. I'm going to click on my graduated filter, make sure that everything here at this point is set to zero. I can click the reset. Then I'm going to come up in my sky area to show you a couple of things. The graduated filter can go across. Go back over to my history and hit the reset. If you want to bring it straight down across the sky, which is probably the best bet for this particular photo, you can start at the top, hold your shift key down, and that'll keep it completely straight. The top part's going to get dark and a little bit more than the bottom part, so we can bring this down a little bit below the skyline. This looks pretty good. Let go. At this point, you don't see any change. What you need to do is fool with these sliders over here. We want to darken the sky, so we want to reduce the exposure just a little bit. This also works to make your skies bluer on a bright and sunny day. If I had a lot of noise problems in my sky, I would want to come down and increase my noise reduction, but I don't need to do that here. If we just double click these arrows, it'll bring it back to the zero point. Maybe I want to increase my saturation in the sky area just a little bit. Another thing we can come in and do is fold our temperature. And this is really useful when you're trying to get your skies really blue. You want to pull this temperature over to the left a little bit. But here we kind of also want a warming effect. So you can fool with your slider and see what looks best. It does look nice if you bring up the temperature. But I'm going to go for a little cooler temperature to bring out that blue. And then I'm going to change the tint a little bit to bring out the pink. I think that looks pretty good. To get out of our graduated filter, you can just click on it again. 
I can fool a little bit with the clarity, vibrance, and saturation in the whole picture. If you're using Adobe Camera Raw, you'll notice that the tools are exactly the same. The layout's just a little bit different. I'm going to bring my clarity up just a touch because I'm going to go into Photoshop and sharpen this later. So I don't want it up too much. I'm going to bring my vibrance up a little bit. I'm going to leave my saturation where it is because I'm going to fool with some tools in Photoshop to bring the saturation and the clouds up just a little bit more. I could fool with the colors down here, try to bring this pink up more, but I'm going to work with that in Photoshop. The one thing I want to do is work with my greens a little bit. Sometimes when you bring up your saturation, I think the greens get to be a little too yellow as far as the green side goes. So I find if I go into these color sliders, click on the luminance, and bring my luminance down on the green a little bit, it darkens it. Bring it all the way up just to see what it does all the way down. I'm going to set it right about there. That looks pretty good. I'm going to leave everything else alone here. And the last thing I'm going to do is go down and use a little bit of noise reduction. You definitely want to do your noise reduction before you go into Photoshop. I think I'm going to go into this area just right in here and selectively reduce the noise. So we'll go up, we'll use our adjustment brush tool. We'll increase the size of this picture. I'm going to hit the control plus to do that. Take my spot removal off again, so I'm on my hand tool. And I really want to reduce the noise just in this particular area. So I'm going to hit my adjustment brush. Make sure everything here is reset to zero. Increase my brush size quite a bit. It's better if you have a nice big bru sweeping brush with this kind of stuff. And I'm just going to select out this area in here. My size down. Reduce my brush. I'm going to bring my brush size down a bit, which I'm just hitting my left bracket key. That's one of the shortcuts I like. And let's brush around in this area a little bit. If I hit the O, it'll show where I brushed. Get this area in here. Make my brush a little smaller, my bracket key right over in here. Take the O off, and we'll just go on our sliders and bring our noise reduction up in those areas a little bit. The Control Plus to make it bigger. Although we can still see a bit of noise in here when it's magnified, we brought it down a little bit. So hit the Control Minus again, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to go into Photoshop and do some finishing touches. So I'm going to take off my adjustment brush, go to my picture, right click, and edit in Photoshop CS6. Dialog will come up. I want to keep those Lightroom adjustments. Click edit. Let's take a little bit of time. Our Lightroom adjusted photos now loaded in Photoshop. I'm going to put my hand tool on, fit to the screen. Whenever I bring a photo into Photoshop, I always want to duplicate my background layer because that means that if I mess something up, I can always get back to my original photo. So I'm going to right click, duplicate layer. On the first layer, I'm going to selectively increase the saturation in some areas. Let me name the layer. And I just double click on it. Increase saturation. Okay. In order to work on a layer, you need to make sure that layer is selected. You'll see a tool panel over here. The tool I need is under this dodge tool here. So I need to right click on it. And it's the sponge tool. I want to make sure that my sponge tool is set to saturate. I want my brush to be something round, not hard. Usually the default is fine. You can change your brush for specific areas. And for this particular photo, I'm going to set my flow at 30%. It is cumulative, so if you go over something several times, it'll give you more saturation than if you just go over it once. I need to make sure I'm on my saturation layer. I can use my shortcuts. I can use my bracket keys to make my 
brush larger or smaller. I'm going to make it a little smaller because the area I really want to get is where the sun's coming down over here. If I decide I've overdone it, which maybe I did down here, I can always switch to desaturate. Let's go over that once. Back to saturate. I'm going to make my brush a lot bigger, which I can also right click and bring up my brush. Just so I can do a sweep over the clouds in here and add just a touch of saturation to them. I make it a little smaller. And I've got a nice flowering tree over there. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation to that tree to make it pop a little bit. And one thing I really like in this photo is the way the sun sets reflecting on the wet road. I want to bring that up a little bit. So I'll make my brush size smaller for over in this area. As we bring it up, make it a bit bigger. I'm holding down my mouse as I go over and want to actually bring up the saturation. So my bracket key to make my brush size smaller, larger. You can see we brought the saturation up in this area a little bit. And I like the way that the saturation pops on the road over in here. All right, it looks pretty nice. I, I really like the sunshine and the reflections on the road. Whenever I get to a place that I kind of like in a photo, I duplicate my layer again so I can get back to that place I was that I really liked. I think I did enough with the saturation here. Sometimes I'll do more than one step with the saturation. What I want to do now is make this tree pop a little more. And the way I'm going to try to make that tree pop a little bit more is to lighten up that area just a touch. So let me rename my layer. Double click on it. And I'm going to call it Lighten Flower Tree. I'll remember what that is if I look at the picture again. And to do that, we want to come back to the same set of tools and use our dodge tool. Our burn tool will make an area darker. Our dodge tool will make it lighter. So I'm going to click on the dodge tool. I want to make sure I have similar kind of brush, soft, round. I'm going to also keep the flow around 30%. We're actually changing our exposure. And I'm going to work on the shadows first. Brush size just a little bit bigger and we can do it here too. Okay, I'm just gonna go over this just a little bit. Lighten up the shadows a little bit and do the same thing with the mid-tones. It's very subtle but it just brings our eye to that tree a little bit more and makes it pop. And we could turn it off so we can see the effect. You don't even notice it so much as you do it but then when you turn it on really can see how it brings that tree out. If we didn't like it, we could just get rid of that layer or just turn that layer off. Next, and could be my final step, is just to sharpen. So I'm going to duplicate my layer again. Call this Sharpen. And my favorite way to sharpen my high dynamic range stuff is to use a high pass filter instead of normal sharpening methods. To do that, I make sure that layer is selected, go up to my filter. And if I wanted to use normal sharpening methods, the unsharp mask works the best. And even though it's called an unsharp mask, it does sharpen. I'm going to go down to the other and the high pass filter. Now, this scene doesn't have tons of detail. Usually I set my high pass filter somewhere between four and five. With this one, I'll take it up to five. I could just type that in instead of fooling with the slider. Hit OK. I've got a gray blob here. But what you need to do to turn it into something that looks more like a sharpened picture is to use your blending modes. You click on your blending mode and you want to use either soft overlay, soft light, hard light are the ones that I would generally use. With hard light sharpening the most, that actually looks pretty good, but sometimes that over sharpens a little bit. If it does, you can bring your opacity down just a little bit. I'll turn, put this back up to 100 and look at some of the others. We could use overlay, which is what I normally use. Or we could use soft light, which sharpens just a little bit less. I'm going to stick with overlay. And we could turn it off. The difference is pretty subtle, and it may be hard to see in the video. But you will see it 
when you're doing it on your picture. And that's pretty good right there. I could quit, but I want to show you a couple other things. Now let me duplicate my background layer again just to show you something in Photoshop. So remember, this is a layer that I haven't done anything on. I'm going to duplicate it. Photoshop is cumulative. So the layer on top is the one that shows. Top layer, our sharpening layer, is a transparent layer. So it is letting the layer underneath it show through. And if we took off this layer, we'd be taking off. You can see the tree got less light but still keeping the sharpening. If we take off this layer, we take off our increases in saturation so we can see what each step did. And if we moved our background layer on top of all this other stuff, the top layer is what's visible. And since this is an opaque layer, you can't see through it. You can't see any of the changes that we made. So I'll take it off. You see all the changes we made, put it on. It's the same as if we turned all these other layers off, our background layers on top. So let's get rid of that. Since the high pass filter is transparent, we can see through that layer. If I want to duplicate this layer and do something underneath the high pass filter, we will see it. What I'm going to do now is mess with my blending modes a little bit more. I have some blending modes in there that can give you some interesting effects. One is to take the hard light, soft light, vivid light, without having the high pass filter on. So let's look at soft light first. And that makes it way darker. Vivid light is going to make it look very surreal. I could fool with all these different lighting modes. The hard light looks kind of cool, but a little bit too dark. You can take that and turn the opacity down quite a bit to just give it a little bit of that look. Okay, again, we can take it off, put it on. Maybe turn it down just even a little bit more. Make sure that's selected. I think it gave it a touch of oomph. I had it 20% before. Let's bring it down to 11%. Looks pretty nice. It's adding just a little bit in there when we put it on. And I like it better with that little bit of effect. And that's it. My picture's done. So I'm going to save it. Save as. I'm going to keep it as a... Photoshop file with all the layers. That way I could go back and work on it. I've got the version I practiced on over here. Hit save. Okay. And now since I open this in Lightroom, you'll see once it finishes saving it, that Photoshop version is going to pop into Lightroom. Let's go back to my library mode. Look at my grid. And my Photoshop photo is now in Lightroom. Okay, I didn't have to import it or anything. Let's compare our properly exposed picture. I'm going to hit the Control or Command key and select them. Our Photoshop picture and our, our Lightroom picture. So I'll double click. I'm going to bring this into full screen to do that. I hit Control Shift F. Here's our correct exposure. Our Photoshop picture and our Lightroom picture before we fixed it in Photoshop. So my workflow was that I took the three pictures, combined them in Photomatix, brought them into Lightroom and did some work on them, and then did some additional work in Photoshop. So there we go. Started out with a pretty spectacular sunset. We could have done a lot in Lightroom to bring that out a little bit and turned it into a really eye-popping sunset picture. Now I'm looking forward to see what you guys do with these photos. Feel free to do something totally different than I did. You don't have to use the same settings.